Hi there, my name is Chris Harris and I'm from AlloyTutors.com and welcome to this video on the electrophilic addition of sulfuric acid. So in this video we're going to look at what an electrophile is just very briefly. Uh, we're going to look at examples of electrophiles and look at some alcohol synthesis as well as the good old fashioned mechanism again, uh, showing you how to do the steps properly, uh, making sure that your arrows are pointing the right way and you are including every single step to get all their marks in the exam. Okay, so let's briefly just remind ourselves what an electrophile is. An electrophile is just a substance, uh, or should I say a chemical, uh, that has uh, that is an electron pair acceptor. Um, it's attracted to the double bond in an alkene. So we're talking about the addition or adding a molecule onto an alkene. This is the case with all alkenes. You always add to the molecule if there's a double bond involved. Um, and the reason why is because this double bond has got loads of electrons. It's electron rich. Um, and so to an, an electrophile, which is electron deficient um, and wants to accept a pair of electrons, then um, it is more than happy to go and attack this double bond. Uh, examples of, uh, of sorry, electrophiles include uh, sulfuric acid, which we're going to look at today because we've got the, um, uh, the diagram shown here. We've got this polarity as well um, that gives us a delta positive, so that makes it an electrophile. Uh, we've also had hydrogen halides as well. We've done videos uh, on hydrogen halides within the alkenes playlist. Uh, also halogens as well, we've done that as well. Uh, it could link in with um, nitrates as well, you could add nitrates onto there, uh, and also H+, which again, we've done a video on looking into the addition of hydrogen onto an alkene to form an alkane. Okay, so um, this reaction has got kind of um, two parts to it really. Uh, one is the mechanism side, which I'll look at in a minute, and the other one is purely just the alcohol synthesis. Now, some exam boards only want you to know the actual reaction, not the mechanism. So it is worth checking your uh, specification to make sure that you do need to know the uh, actual mechanism for this, because actually your exam board, if you're lucky, may not want you to uh, actually know the mechanism. But the straightforward synthesis is basically this. It's your alkene and you go react it with water. Um, and we use a sulfuric acid catalyst uh, and then we should produce ethanol. Now this is the industrial process or the industrial uh, method of producing um, ethanol. You can do it by fermentation um, or you can do it by this method here. Now alkenes, a source of alkenes is from crude oil. Uh, when you crack crude oil, uh, some of the products of cracking are alkenes. And so there's a large amount of this and it is an industrial grade um, ethanol. So it's relatively cheap to do. It's pretty straightforward reaction. Sulfuric acid is pretty cheap to use as well. Um, the temperature is pretty low. It's not too high. It's about 300 degrees Celsius. Um, so it's a moderate heat compared to some reactions. Uh, but the pressure is quite high. It's 60 atmospheres or 6,000 kilopascals of pressure. And um, this reaction, um, these are the conditions that the reaction must undergo. So let's look at the mechanism. So the mechanism is basically going to show how the sulfuric acid actually acts as a catalyst. So what is it actually doing? And it's actually a two-step process that occurs here. So I've got our alkene and our sulfuric acid here. And um, if you've seen the other mechanisms to do with um, adding on to alkenes, you'll notice this is incredibly similar. So there's nothing really to new here. So let's uh, put on our delta positives and delta negatives. So our delta negative is sitting on the oxygen there, and we have a delta positive sitting on the hydrogen. Now you need to know the uh, the structure of sulfuric acid. And it looks like a like a man or a woman kind of sticking their hands up in the air and the legs are kind of bent kind of like inwards almost as if they're going to do the splits. So that's kind of like how I kind of remember it. So um, you can see you've got your alkene here. Um, now in terms of the mechanisms, we need to draw a curly arrow. Curly arrows always go from the area of a highest electron density. So this is going from the alkene. You must remember that you can't draw it going from here to here, although it is tempting because it looks as though you're adding it on, it must go from here. So this loads of electrons in this double bond is gonna go for the delta positive, which doesn't have many electrons. And then as a result, we're gonna break this bond here and the electrons are gonna jump onto this oxygen here. So you must be really specific with your arrows. If you're very sloppy with your arrows and you're not, and you're just kind of loosely drawing them everywhere, you may not get the marks. You've got to be really obvious where the electrons are going from from the alkene onto there. Okay, so let's draw our intermediate. So, okay, so we have, okay, the double bond has now effectively just been uh, broken. Uh, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add on this um, 
hydrogen sulfide here, okay? So this bit here. So literally, this bit is adding on, which is the hydrogen. So we're going to add the hydrogen onto there. So we'll add it, actually, I'll add it onto this, this end here. So this is the hydrogen that's literally been added onto this molecule. Uh, we have a carbocation, which is there. We have a positive charge on that carbon because it's deficient in electrons. Uh, and then we're going to add our hydrogen sulfate ion. So we've literally got that that's left behind. We have a negative charge on the oxygen. We also have a lone pair on there as well. So we're going to stick the lone pair on the oxygen. So that just shows that actually the electrons that were in this bond is now jumped onto the oxygen and it has a negative charge. Now the next step is to add this uh, lump here and add it onto the molecule. And this is the first kind of like intermediate step. So in terms of the exams, you get one mark for this arrow, one mark for that arrow, and then one mark for your intermediate structure as well. You may even get a mark for drawing this next arrow that we're gonna show here. Now this time it's going from here onto the delta, onto the actual proper positive carbocation here. The electrons are here, so it moves from here to the positive carbocation, not the other way around, because the arrow always shows the direction of electron flow. Here are the electrons, and they're flowing to the carbon. So we're now going to draw our structure. So let's draw it down here. So we've got two carbons, hydrogen, 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 Right, and literally it's this whole molecule that has been added on. And what I'll try and do is I'll try and draw exactly how I've drawn it on there. So it makes it a little bit easier to see. There you go. And you can see the whole molecule is literally now bolted onto the side. Now, we need to know what this is called as well. Um, and this one is pretty simple. All you do is you start off with this first bit here. So this is ethyl. So we'll do this in blue. So this is called Ethyl, which is this bit here, that's the ethyl bit, uh, and then it's going to be hydrogen. There's our hydrogen there, so we're going to put hydrogen, uh, and then sulfate. And the sulfate is just SO4 minus, so or SO42 minus, which is the sulfate. So we'll do that one in red, and the sulfate bit is this bit, the SO4 bit, which is on there. So this is called ethyl hydrogen sulfate. Okay, and so this is the molecule that we form here. Now you might think, well, that's not an alcohol. And this is actually the intermediate step. What we've done is the catalyst has actually opened up this double bond and it's prepped the molecule. So it's kind of like getting it ready to accept the water. The next step after this, which you don't need to know the mechanism for, thankfully, uh, but the next step, then what you would do is you then add your water to this and you'd warm it up a little bit. It needs a little bit of heat just to get it going. And what the water does is it effectively kicks this bit off here. Uh, the water splits, um, and we call this hydrolysis. Um, we're going to actually add that in green. So put that on there. This is called hydrolysis. Uh, and then effectively what you form is you form your ethyl. So let's draw the displayed formula. Lots of hydrogens. The OH, so the, this OH has come from the water. There's a hydrogen left over, and that hydrogen loops onto here because this has got to break off. Uh, and then effectively what we're left with is our sulfuric acid back again. There you go. There's your sulfuric acid. Let's put that, let's write that down there. Let's write the names of our things. So this is called ethanol. This is called sulfuric acid. And et voila, there you go. This is your acid. Look, you've formed it back again. So that's a key, key thing uh, in terms of um, a catalyst is that, yeah, we use it to help the reaction go, but it's always reformed back again. And this is what's happened here. And a lot of what we call, these are called homogeneous catalysts. Um, a lot of these catalysts actually um, interact with the molecule. They physically react with the molecule, but crucially, they're reformed back again. Um, and that's really, really important that you emphasize if the question asks, show how sulfuric acid acts as a catalyst, and you need to show it being reformed at the end because that's the crucial thing uh, as part of a catalyst. And the final thing really as well, as although I've drawn a symmetrical alkene here, uh, you can get asymmetrical alkenes. And this molecule obviously has the alkene, uh, or the double bond on one side of the molecule, and that leaves 
uh, the other side without one. And um, that case, you could get different products. You might not get here, like which is a primary alcohol. You could get a secondary alcohol or even a tertiary alcohol um, as well. And um, now with that molecule, you would have to have different carbocation intermediates, and that is depending very, very much dependent on the uh, carbocation that has been formed. So you've got to look out for that as well, and just be aware that you might not just get one. Uh, form of alcohol. Now, I have done a video that looks into that, so if you want to look at the video that looks into the asymmetrical alkenes with uh, the um, bit of knowledge on carbocations, we just click on the link below and you can have a look at it there. Um, but um, for that purpose, you do need to know that it links in with the um, sulfuric acid as well. But um, there we go, that's it. There's your electrophilic addition of sulfuric acid. Bye bye.